spotted. Hello and welcome to my villager bombing run tutorial. Um, again, we're starting right here at these three basic commands, but for those who haven't seen them, uh, I'm going to show them. And not only that, there's been some changes to them, so if, even if you've built the system before, uh, you need to watch this. So, this command gives our villagers a smoke trail. Um, no change here. This command actually moves our villagers downward. Um, and this is where the major change is. So previously, it would tell uh, all villagers named Dinnerbone to teleport all villagers named Dinnerbone negative 0.7 blocks or 0.7 blocks downward. However, it, this time, instead of telling all villagers named Dinnerbone to teleport all villagers named Dinnerbone down 0.7 blocks, it tells each villager named Dinnerbone to teleport themselves uh, 0.7 blocks downward. So this allows for there to be more than one villager spawned at a time. Previously, if there were more than one villager named Dinnerbone, they would both teleport to each other, and basically it would just be the same effect as having one villager. However, since we're telling each villager to teleport themselves downwards separately, you can now bombard an entire area with multiple villagers, and they will all actually hit where they're supposed to and not teleport to each other or teleport to one space, so it doesn't break the system anymore. And then, this command gives our villagers the flame trail, and this command is unchanged from previous versions. So, let's get right into things. Uh, over here is the mechanism that actually spawns in the phantoms and the villagers. Um, but, for those who haven't seen one of my contraptions before, basically, how you start it off is you place a spawn egg down, and that gives the villagers a reference point uh, to spawn around. So, in this case, I have an Endermite, uh, but when I place this Endermite named Beacon down, uh, then a Phantom spawns. But in previous versions, I would place down a Ravager, and the Ravager would be used as a reference point. But in this case, this Endermite actually spawns in the Phantoms, which are then used as reference points. So if the Endermite dies, uh, the bombing run still continues, is basically what this accomplishes. Um, Let's go over the basic commands. For those who have seen my Mike traps before, this might seem familiar. This just gives our uh, Endromite here a red particle effect, and it makes it look like a flare. Um, this um, command block is similar to the um, villager command block. Uh, I had made a mistake here, but it was execute at E name equals beacon, uh, teleport at E name equals beacon, to then they would all teleport to the same place, but since again, it's teleport at itself, it's addressing them all differently, so you can place down more than one Endermat and someone in more than one bombing run at the same time and they'll still function. Although there's a, there was a slight caveat to that, which I'll get in a second. Uh, this command block just makes our Endermat invisible, so all you see is the red particle effect, so it looks like a flare. And then this command block actually moves our phantoms. As you can see, uh, it's telling the phantoms to move 0.6 blocks uh, constantly in this direction. Um, the 121 is just the Y height, it's just 50 blocks, or 51 blocks above ground level. Um, and then I'm telling it to, to, the 270 is telling it to face this way, and the 0 is just telling it to look straight horizontally, don't look up or down. And then, okay, let's get over to these command blocks over here. So, when I place down my Endromite named Beacon, this command gets activated, and since it's activated, this comparator sends out a signal to this command block, which actually summons in the phantoms. However, there is a slight delay of 80 ticks, and this serves to let you place down more than one bombing run at a time. If I place down an Endermite, and there is no tick delay on this command block, then the phantom would spawn in, the, the bombing run would happen instantly. Uh, which doesn't sound like a bad thing, but if I wanted to summon in more than one bombing run at a time, 
if it triggered instantly, the second one that I placed down would do nothing. Um, so basically, this gives you 80 ticks to place down as many bombing runs as you want, and after 80 ticks, all of those will function, all of those will occur, but if you try to place down another one after 80 ticks, uh, it won't work. Um, and nothing will happen until you wait for the system to reset, and then you may start summoning in more bombing runs. And then, this is the command block that actually starts the system, it sets the score uh, randomly from 1 to 5. So if you haven't, if you don't know how to make scoreboards and set scores, uh, I've placed a video in the description, I've done this in previous videos, but it's the video that I used uh, to learn how to use scoreboards. Uh, I'm not going to explain how to do it, because that would take a little bit of explanation and I want to make this video short and concise and easy to follow. Um, but basically, the score gets set between 1 and 5, and then as you can see I have 4 of these, or 5 of these, what I called them, I called them fire control systems, and what basically each of these does is it detects one of the scores, for this one it's 1, and then for each score there is a corresponding coordinate for the villager to spawn, so as you can see we're using the phantom named plane as a reference point, and basically this, when the score, or if the score is set to 1, then the villager will be summoned uh, one block to the left and one block below uh, the phantom. However, if the score is something else, say two, then the villager will spawn in at completely different coordinates, but you want to vary them slightly. So for each score, one through five, you want a command block that detects one of the scores, and then the next command block will summon in a villager, but obviously you want to alter the coordinates slightly for each one. The third command block in each fire control system is exactly the same. It just resets the score back to zero, so basically it resets the system so the next missile is ready to be fired. Um, and then there's a blank space here, but I'll get to that in a second. And at the end of each of these fire control systems, you just need a command block that resets the score to a score different from the one previously chosen. So obviously, since the score is one in this fire control system, we are, we're setting the score somewhere between two and five. Uh, so just make sure that after each score is set, make sure to set the score to zero to reset it, and then set it to a different score from the one that was previously chosen. And that's how the missiles are summoned in. And now we'll get to how they actually blow up. So this command block I just want to go over first. This gives our phantoms fire resistance so they obviously just don't burn up. And then these command blocks are actually what make the villagers explode. So. In previous videos, the villagers would use a timed fuse, so uh, I would just take, I would just measure how long it takes for a villager to travel from the sky to the ground, and then I would make them blow up at the end of that time span. This time, we actually have a detection system in place, so this command I haven't featured in a video before, so I want to go over this in a bit of detail. So at each villager named Dinnerbone, it detects if there's a grass block one block below them, and if there is, uh, it summons an ender crystal that instantly explodes. So basically it's saying, at all villagers named Dinnerbone, if there's a grass block one block below you, explode. Um, so obviously, if I was using a bombing run on an empty field, that would work. But say if I wanted to bombard something like a town over here, um, obviously the villagers will run into blocks other than grass. So, um, as you can see, we have a terracotta building over there. And obviously, I've placed in a command block that tells the villagers also if there's a terracotta block one block below you also explode and you want to do that um, according to what terrain or what you're bombarding with your villagers so as you can see I have a few command blocks and that's because well there's buildings made of cobblestone there's some red sandstone there um, if say the ground has already been blown up by a previous bombing run there's gonna be dirt instead of grass so also explode if there's grass and maybe there might be stone as well so you just want to make sure to account for all the block types you might run into. Uh, and then, we have a couple safety systems in place. So you might have been wondering what this blank space is for. And that's sort of a safety mechanism to make sure that the sort of system turns on when it needs to, and when it's not in use, it turns off. So when we first place down our Endermite, this command, making it invisible, will be activated. And thus, a comparator will send a signal over here, basically telling all these command blocks to uh, fill in each of these blank spaces with a dirt block, which completes the circuit and makes sure that the signal reaches this last command block over here. However, uh, 
when our phantom spawned in, it obviously gets teleported and this um, command block is activated. Um, and it runs into these commands, which kill all our phantoms when the uh, bombing run has elapsed, or in this case, 100 ticks, I've set this length of the bombing runs to be. And same for the uh, endermites if they haven't died. Uh, but at the end of the bombing run, we obviously want the dirt blocks being removed, because otherwise, uh, the score will be set randomly um, over and over and over again, even though there is no phantoms and thus no villagers can spawn, but it'll just keep getting reset. And to stop that, basically these command blocks uh, just when activated after um, 100 ticks, they removed the dirt blocks, making the circuit incomplete and basically resetting the system. So that is the setup for the villager bombing run. Um, I just want to remind you that this command block has 80 ticks, 80 tick delay. Um, these command blocks have no tick delay. These command blocks to kill the phantoms and kill the endermite have a tick delay of 100, which is basically the length of the bombing run, and those, these ones also have a tick delay of 100. Those are all the tick delays that you need to remember. But that's the system, and let's, although you saw it in the intro, let's just uh, demonstrate things once more. So, uh, we place it down, and we're going to wait 80 ticks for it to happen. As you can see, we have a nice flare effect. And after 80 ticks, the phantom spawns in, it gets teleported that way, and villagers get spawned around it until the airstrike or the bomb run has elapsed and the phantom died. Uh, but the villagers can still function because their commands are not attached to the system and when they detect that there's a grass block one block below them they explode, uh, leaving us with this nice clean bombing run. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, I actually made a previous tutorial, um, but that tutorial is outdated because I made it three weeks ago and I made these improvements to the system relatively recently, uh, so if you were to check that out, even though it's outdated, I would appreciate it a lot. Uh, I also have some uh, intro fails that I'm going to post uh, as unlisted, so if you were to check those out, I would greatly appreciate that as well. Um, but if you enjoyed this video, leave a like, leave a comment, maybe even consider subscribing, and I'll catch you in whatever I post next.